Well, Jill, it's great that uh, you've taken over uh, for the Porters with uh, with the uh, uh, Roseman uh, Rose Runners Booster program, and I know that entails a lot. And uh, you're looking for volunteers, I yes. guess. Yes. Parents and. Parents and. Do they have to have a, a boy on the team or something? No. 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 Any anybody. Any type of help would be great. Would be great. <laughs> All right. And uh, I know people want to sign up for the uh, online version of the Roseman News, and as a fundraiser, you're going to sell that at your table at the games. Okay, well, that'll be good. I, we certainly appreciate the help and hope we can bring in some money for the, for the runners this year. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Get some uh, extra booster help. Okay, uh, how much time does that really entail? Um, maybe an hour. Uh, for a meeting before a home game, um, uh -huh. and then to help serve maybe an hour during um, before the games. Uh huh. Um, not too much, maybe an hour a week. Uh huh. And that would be the hour would be uh, on Friday. Uh, either Friday or um, some day during the week, maybe uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. We have a meeting um, to schedule um, how Friday is going to happen. How sure. How they're going to be fed. Uh huh. Um, and that's just about it. It's, it's not too much time. Now, what telephone number should they call if they want to get involved? Sure, 805-358-6360. Um, uh -huh. okay. 6360, okay. And the vice president, um, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, myself and the Roseman Chamber of Commerce thank the, uh, the Water District for their help in putting up the sign, the new Rose, Welcome to Roseman Gateway sign. Uh, I know Bob has some pictures, and I have, I have one or two if you want to pass them around. But that's what I'd like to do. You know, I couldn't do it by myself, and uh, without your assistance, I would have had a really tough time putting it up. So I really thank you for the help, and it was great. The water bills are terrific. Two, we understand you're charging for per unit, not per water used. And uh, we have, uh, we last week, two weeks ago, we had 21 units out of 29 vacant. Uh, everybody is suffering on this uh, economy. Uh, today we have 13 vacant, we are raising the units. But the problem of, uh, of water is killing us because the revenues are not paying for water, and uh, besides everything else that we have to pay for. And it seems to me that uh, charging for services not rendered, not, I mean, which is, if, a, if, an, if an apartment is vacant, they're not using water. So it seems to me you're charging for services that you're not providing. I understand that you could charge for water used, doesn't matter, uh, the meter is running, you charge for that. But the day when we bought this property in 2001, uh, we put the heart to, to, to put a nice place for the community. We did so many um, uh, uh, homework to see it with another cities and another places and another things. And nobody else than uh, Rosman charged for unit we cannot afford anymore. My husband just uh, three years ago is a retirement from the, uh, the university, and we cannot continue it in these struggles, economical struggles, because we pay water a thousand, one hundred, a thousand, two hundred, a thousand. Actually, we cannot afford no more. Well, Russ, the RCSD approved uh, your request for at least one of the lights at uh, the retirement center. And uh, do you have a comment about that? I uh, appreciate the board considering the one. I'll uh, continue to work with the board and see if we can get the second one. We still feel it's needed. We've got a lot of people walking along that sidewalk, and uh -huh. it's just a dark area. Uh -huh. Some of it's our tenants walking, our clients walking. But the demographics are changing in town, and we just need more life and more security. Uh -huh. The new light that the RCSD approved tonight, uh, did you see that as a benefit for the people that live over there? Absolutely. There's a there's an increase in the foot traffic in the evening hours after dark uh -huh. in that area around Rosemont Hills and traveling back and forth from the apartment 
apartment complexes down the street to the north and the mobile home park. Uh -huh. And it is a dark area there. I believe that uh, increased lighting will add security and safety to the residents of Roseman Hills uh -huh. and to the local businesses on both sides of the street. Sure, sure. Lighting is important at night for the security of folks and their property. Public affairs exist to benefit both the surrounding communities of the Air Force Base and the Air Force itself. Uh -huh. Airmen morale and readiness is important, and our airmen are citizens of your communities. Sure. So it's important that we're good neighbors with you and that you understand that we appreciate your support, and we can't do what we do without you. Okay. So we want to make sure that you know what's going on out on Edwards and that we know what's going on out in the community. Sure, and your telephone number? Our telephone number is area code 661 Yes. 277 okay. 3510. 3510, and that's good for. Tours and uh, questions. And Tours, questions, community okay. activities. If you want to know what's going on out on Edwards or if you want to let us know what's going on in your communities, sure. give us a call or click on our public web website, which is edwards.af.mil, mm -hmm. and let us know what's going on. We'd be happy to assist. Meredith, uh, the Public Affairs Office at Edwards provided you today to speak at Rosemond Rotary. We'd like to know very much about the fly-in. What's going to happen? Well, on October 1st, we're going to invite 100 civilian pilots to fly in and land on Roseman Dry Lake Bed mm -hmm. at Edwards Air Force Base. Uh -huh. It's being selected by lottery. The lottery will happen tomorrow, which is September 10th. If you're not selected for the lottery, you're welcome to drive in and participate in the event, and those registrations will happen all the way until September 24th. All right, but there's a cap, I understand, on that of maybe 2,000 people. We're, we're <coughs> hoping that we will be able to limit it to 2,000 people just for everybody's care and comfort while they're out there. Looking for a, forward to a happy tournament? Yeah. yeah. Successful tournament? Yes. Well, that's good. And you're keeping your hitting up? Yes. And you got some good pitchers yeah. right here. Yep. Well, pitcher. pitcher, catcher, yeah. Out Takes out here. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Tournament for our team. It's going to be in Hacienda Heights on okay. the 25th. Uh -huh. And uh, these 12-year-olds, they got 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12-year-olds out here. Uh -huh. And they played really good in the 11 and under tournament. And they're a lot better and more confident now. So we're looking for a lot more success. How did you select these boys? Um, we had a tryout. Um, we, we had our parent meeting for a lot in Roseman. Yeah. And uh, only about five of the players that came to the camp did not play. The rest are here. Uh, and then we had to add in the paper, and the others answered the ad in the paper. Car wash this Saturday. The okay. Boys trying to raise money for their uniforms. Okay. And it's going to be at the Roseman Chevron on 20th Street. West, okay. And right there by the post office. Sure. Starting from 8 o'clock in the morning, morning. to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. What the cost of the. It's, uh, you know, most of them get is five. They're asking five dollars or whatever you want to donate. How many games do you typically have in a summer season like this? Uh, well, let's see. It depends on how many tournaments we have. Uh, you know, like the last tournament, we had an opportunity to play up up to six games, but we only got to three. Uh huh. So, uh, okay. Yeah, it depends on the, the size of the tournament and how many teams are there. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, but we try to get a tournament a, a month and uh, and you know intermix that with uh, practice and uh, sure and, and fundraising. Got a lot of rush. What was the score of the game? How do you think you did? Did you get any touchdowns today? One. Okay. Thank you. It was a rushing touchdown. How did you feel about the game today? It was really awesome. Really tired now. That's from a concussion. I don't know. What about your last... I speak, so... How about your last tackle of the game? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what happened. I thought we had a really good game today. I thought the kids worked really hard and they came together and it was a whole team effort. That's why uh, we had the victory we had, 14-12. How was the defensive line? They did really well today. Exploding off the ball, swarming the football. I thought they did a great job. How was the game today? It was excellent. Good push on offense and defense. The stop was good on defense. Uh, the offense, the guys stayed with uh, their blocks and it was, it was a good run. The whole team stepped up today. It was a good step up on uh, from the, the line all the way down to the quarterback to the center. It was good. It was good all around. Well, Jack, uh, how's your crystal ball looking today uh, about the water bank and all the things that are happening out there? Public meetings, the directors and staff refer to the SNP line. How does that uh, interact with the water bank? Well, the SNP line is a